Hello everyone in YouTube. My name is Guido Testalalegna, but you can call me Woody for short. I am your guide today to visit one of the world's greatest landmarks, the Monumento ai Caduti in Ancona, Italy. Ancona, which is the middle calf muscle on the east coast as you look at the boot of Italy. What a monumental monument. She's a spectacular. Monumento ai Caduti means monument to the fallen, referring to the people lost in World War I from 1914 to 1918. About 20 million people died in that war, and about 700,000 just here in Italy. That's a lot of dead people for one war. Maybe they should have postponed the construction until World War II. Lots more people died. Save some time anyway. This monument is located east of the center of the city, close to Passetto Beach. If you go down many, many stairs, look at all the stairs. Too many stairs to count, but a really good exercise if you want to run up and a down, up and a down, up and a down. This monument was designed in the 1920s by the Italian architect Guido Cirilli in the form of this circular temple called Menoptoro, with all the columns standing around at the center. It's a Renaissance influenced and a rediscovery of magnificent ancient architecture. It has eight columns placed above a concentric circular staircase around a circular base. This base is decorated with helmets and swords, which are symbols of defense and attack. In the center, there's a small altar at which bread and wine are consecrated in a communion. It's made entirely of Istrian stone, means all of these stones came from Croatia across the sea. The view from the monument looks out over the Adriatic Sea in that direction. In the summer you can almost see Croatia, and that means Croatia can almost see us. Maybe they want the stones back, maybe we should cover them up. The monument was inaugurated in 1930, in the middle of the fascist era, so back then it was fascist Italy. That's why those facies, those axe bundles, decorate the top rim. That's a nice touch, eh, Benito? In March 1923, the Prince of Piedmont, Umberto II, participated in the ceremony to lay the first stone. I'm curious which stone exactly, but in that stone was inserted a commemorative parchment created and donated by architect Giuseppe Andreoli from Urbino with this inscription. Over the centuries, the works that most highly affirm the nobility of the human spirit arose from the blood of the heroes, from the pure and a generous blood from the children that before any other city, Ancona gave to the great redemptive war. This monument, standing as a symbol of love to the Italians, arises perennially proud and austere admonition to foreigners. 11 March 1925. Maybe not the best translation. It's a basically a warning to foreigners if they want to attack Italy, steal our wine, sunflowers, handbags, and other designer accessories, various footwear, and fast cars they call pasta rockets. But I tell you, this warning is not very warm and friendly to 62 million visiting tourists who just want pizza, gelato, and take a nice selfie on the steps. It's a more like don't mess with Ancona, which is a little like starting a war for peace, no? Maybe that's why Italy has all three volcanoes in Europe, and we're not afraid to use them. You know, Italians are proud of their culture. Did you know if an Italian a vampire goes to an Italian restaurant, he asks the waiter, what do you mean I can't have a garlic? The waiter has to hold up a mirror. That's cultural pride. But what's truly amazing to me is the construction of these great monuments. Tell me, how do they do that? And how did they lift that big donut ring on top of these columns? It would take like five guys standing on their shoulders. And how do they keep the balance? I have no idea. It must weigh like 10 million kilograms. What about the wind? What about the earthquake? And what happened with this big hole in the roof? 
They probably forgot to fill the hole in the construction. I guess they'll do it later when they have more time, but I think that's why they call it the Monument to the Fallen, because of the men, they fall right through the hole down to the ground. And that makes some more sense. And when it rains, that big hole, it lets the rain come right down on anyone standing in the middle of the monument. And if you don't have an umbrella, you get completely wet from head to foot. So don't forget, bring an umbrella or come a visit on a sunny day, depending on the weather. Always remember, eat well with a big appetite, laugh a lot, a lot, and love deeply. I am Guido Testa de Legno, and this is a monument I could do in Ancona, Italy. Arrivederci, YouTube. That's right, it's true. A guido means a guide. Testa de legno means head of wood. Monumento ai caduti, monumento ai caduti, monumento ai caduti, monumento ai caduti, monument, monumento ai caduti, monumento ai caduti, monumento ai caduti, monumento ai caduti. Monoptoro, 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 monoptoro. Pasta rockets, like Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, and Fiat. Anybody know where I can get an espresso? If anybody ever hears this video, I promise to everyone, I will never do an Italian accent again. <laughs>